Hi, I'm Daphne from Daph's Cast Vlogs. These vlogs are all about the side effects of chemotherapy and how to overcome them in a holistic manner. All I'm trying to do is to impart some of the experiences that I myself went through when I had to go through chemotherapy for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In today's vlog, we're going to be covering the Budwig protocol. The what wig? <laughs> yes, let me explain in a bit. As well as the benefits of fermented food and a very quick and easy recipe for you to follow. The Budwig diet was developed by a leading German scientist called Dr. Johanna Budwig in around the 1950s, 1940s. It's also called the Budwig protocol. It is used both by people who want to avoid drugs as well as to support some of the treatment that they're undergoing. It is a holistic treatment, including lifestyle changes. Not massive ones, but certainly changes. It is designed to treat conditions and illnesses naturally. And they range from digestive disorders to cancer, diabetes to heart diseases, and so many more. The Budwick diet, which includes a blend of cottage cheese and flaxseed oil, may sound a little strange, but don't worry, you'll eventually get used to it, just like I did. Basically, it's organic cottage cheese, which I find works best and is also the highest in protein, some flaxseed and flaxseed oil. I get mine from a brand called Stony Crete. They're just great when you order your products because not only do they send it in packs to keep it cool, as flaxseed oil must always be kept in the refrigerator. They also know about the Budwick protocol and will also include great recipes and step-by-step -step guidance for the newbies. So basically, it's six tablespoons of cottage cheese, three tablespoons of flaxseed oil, and then you cream it all together with a handheld blender. Why whisk it if you can blend it, right? Then you add ground flaxseed. Please don't buy ground flaxseed. You need to grind your own because flaxseed goes rancid 15 minutes after grinding. Get yourself organic flaxseed. There are many different varieties and grind them yourself. You only need about a tablespoon per portion. There's no difference in the type of flax seeds that you use. It's just the depth of flavor. Use your own coffee bean grinder. It's the best way to get fresh flaxseed meal. Today, I added some blueberries and kiwi fruit to my portion. Ta-da! I also add honey to my portion as well. You can also do a savory version, including coriander and lemon juice and some paprika, anything to get it down. So it's going to take you some time to build up to the portion of flaxseed oil to cottage cheese. Um, in the beginning, what I did was I only started with four tablespoons of cottage cheese to two tablespoons of flaxseed oil and built it up from there. And yes, I heat a lot of fruit uh, into it because I still needed to get used to the taste. And you need to allow your body to adjust the amount of flaxseed oil that it's taking in. But the benefits are so worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the Budwig protocol link for you below as well as the benefits of flaxseed oil. So another joyous thing from the Budwig protocol is to take shots. What kind of shots? Not even vodka shots. Oh no. We're talking about sauerkraut shots. Oh yes. And believe me, first thing in the morning, it's not joyous at all. But you get used to it eventually. Now another way of incorporating a lot of organic sauerkraut into your diet is to obviously eat it regularly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very easy recipe of how to make your very own sauerkraut at home. Shall we? And so we begin with the sauerkraut recipe. Get yourself an organic head of cabbage, normal one is also fine, some sea salt, I'm using the Himalayan rock salt, some caraway seeds or juniper berries work fine, a mason jar or a jar that you can use for pickling, and a mixing bowl along with a very sharp knife. Clean all the leaves of the cabbage, but make sure you keep one, and I will tell you why later on in this recipe. Once that's done, get your very, very sharp knife and slice that baby right down the middle.
Now I don't know about you, but I don't like stems in my sauerkraut, so just cut it out. When we are talking about the ratio of a salt to cabbage, basically it's 3% of the cabbage weight. So if you've got one kilo of cabbage, then the ratio of salt should be 25 grams. So if it's two kilos of cabbage, then it's 50 grams. Now, some people like using a mandolin if they're going to do big, huge batches of sauerkraut. Me, I just use my chopping knife and off we go. Once you've chopped all the cabbage up, put it into the bowl. And then you add the salt to it. Right, time to use your bare hands to get right in there. Oops, don't forget to take off the ring and start giving it a good old massage. With these movements, what we're trying to do is get as much brine from it as possible. So giving it a good old squeeze will get it all out. Once that's done, leave it to rest for 10 minutes. Once you've left it for 10 minutes, then mash it up. I'm using um, a pestle. You can also use a potato masher. It's entirely up to you or even the end of a rolling pin. But just mash it down because what we're trying to do is get as much of that brine out of it as possible. Once that's done, add in your caraway seeds. Now, it's entirely up to you what you want to use to season it. But just remember, when you're fermenting it, the, the seasoning does become a lot more intense. You can also use juniper berries as well. Give it a good old mix. Make sure you've incorporated all the caraway seed into the cabbage, which is going to be your sauerkraut in the future. So you want to make sure it's all nicely blended in together. You can see here as I'm mixing it, there's more liquid. I'd say we're absolutely ready now to start packing this all away into our mason jar. Yes, I have put a glove on and the reason why is as you're adding each handful into the mason jar or the jar that you're going to be using for pickling, you need to press down hard on the cabbage because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the brine to rise up. You need the brine to completely cover the cabbage because this is how the fermentation begin so just keep packing away with every single handful press down firmly you can use your pestle again if you want to if you don't want to use the back of your hand or you can also use the rolling pin as well anything that's going to help you push the cabbage down further into the jar okay but make sure it's sterilized please because we don't want any uh, weirdo stuff going into our sauerkraut just keep pushing it down. As you can see, the liquid's now all rising to the top. And don't leave that brine in the bowl behind. Add it into your jar. Keep pushing it all the way down. Look at that. You can see the brine rising to the top. And now let's use that cabbage leaf that you left behind. That's right. This is what it's for. And it goes on the top of your sauerkraut or future sauerkraut, should I say, uh, because this is the most natural way of covering the sauerkraut. Push it down even further. And the reason why I'm putting this leaf is because I'm going to need to put a weight on top to keep it firmly pressed down. What I'm using is water in a Ziploc bag because I don't really have any of the metal weights to put it down. I'm just going to pop it on top of this cabbage leaf like so. And there you have it. Uh, what I also am going to do is I'm going to put a cheesecloth on top of this jar. No, don't seal it because it needs to breathe. And that will keep all the bits and bobs out of here. Time to store it in a cool, dark place. As we move back to more homemade and fermented products, we realize that it really isn't that much of a hassle to make these superfoods and they are so beneficial for you. So apart from the fermented products that I have been making, I've also started really getting into my kombucha. If you missed that vlog, it's just a few vlogs back. And since then, it's becoming really, really good. This one is with pineapple. Um, I started making it with red apple juice. I started making it with pear juice. 
I also made it with ginger and lemon. So basically I'm just trying all sorts of different flavors to see how it works. But believe me, it's very beneficial for you because if the Chinese can call kombucha the immortal tea, it must mean something, hey? Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Um, the Budwick protocol really helped me a lot, especially when I was going through chemotherapy. And for those of you who have allergies or are lactose intolerant, there is a recipe on the Budwick protocol for lactose-free products as well. Now remember, you are not in this journey alone. We are all going through this together, whether you've just started or have just come out of it. And I do hope that it has helped even in a small way. So if you do like what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button and the like button below. And I hope to see you in the next vlog. Until then, bye.